One, two, three. This is the Cider Ranch Podcast. I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. Okay, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Cider Ranch Podcast. My name is Mike. And I'm Ben. And today we're joined again by a one of our all-time best guests. Um, <laughs> He's, uh, you know, he was on this. At, he was on our podcast a few months ago, which actually feels like 30 years ago because of COVID. Um, but yeah, he was. I think he was our first guest on the show, and uh, probably the one that we're really excited to chat with. And now he's back. Surprisingly, he actually somehow responded to my email and wanted to chat with us again, which I'm really surprised by. So, I'd like to um, welcome Mr. Mark Sargent back on the show, Mark. Welcome back to the the podcast, man. Wait, this is Jimmy Kimmel. No, it is. No, it is. No, it is. He's, he's, oh, he's oh, okay, okay, good, yeah, yeah. good. You're Bye. you're actually you're actually our Matt Damon. <laughs> so, in fact, we'd prefer it if we never spoke with you again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for bringing me on. Uh, happy to be here uh, in the middle of the <laughs> well, the end of 2020, which will. I have a funny feeling it's going to seem tame by comparison as we roll into the next year. So definitely, definitely. People are going to be wishing for these days. <laughs> Remember when we just had to wear masks? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so how are, before we get kind of started, how, how is uh, everything going down where you are with uh, the whole, you know, pandemic in the U.S.? How is it Horrible. affecting your area? Horrible. America's going, to, going down. It's going down like a yeah. sack of dirt. Yeah. It is, it is, um, you know, I've got friends all over the place and not just in the States, but outside the States. And I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, but the, you know, they're protesting in Europe, you know, in France and UK and Spain, you know, they're protesting the lockdowns. In the US, they were so clever in that they distracted everybody with Black Lives Matter and the election that the virus thing just, you know, between those two, you know, that's, that's it. And then the virus thing, it's like, oh, okay, we have to wear masks. And meanwhile, they quietly shuttered most main streets in uh, just about every town you could think of. I've done a whole bunch of rants on them, a whole bunch of rants since, since 2020 started, predicted everything. And you say, look, this is how it's going to, if I was in the CIA, <laughs> this is how I would lay it out. It's standard <laughs> interrogation techniques 101, which is you, you turn up the pressure, you turn up the pressure, you turn up the pressure, and then you give them a, an opt, an opt out, which is a release. It's like, you know, you guys see it in the movies. It's like, you know, all this suffering, all this pain, this can go away. All you have to do is take that shot over there. You're going to do it? And, you know, people, people are just like, you, you should see it. I mean, 70% of the population next month, well, beginning this month and going into next month, it will, will knock people over, knock grandma over in the street to get, to get their vaccine. Yeah. Guarantee it. So, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know how to sugarcoat it. It's it's not uh, it's not fun at all. And if you, if you haven't figured out, I am. Uh, I, I don't know exactly who what what your audience is, you know, if, if they're conspiracy based or whatever. But I'll, I'll I won't delve into them too much because I know you guys want to do JFK. Yeah. But it's, it goes a little something like this. Uh, I usually try to shut people down in one paragraph. And my paragraph is, look, you want me to be more concerned? You want me more serious about the vaccine? Fine. Answer one question for me. Why did they ban smoking on airplanes? Simple. It's a simple question. And, and the question, the answer is, well, because secondhand smoke, the, the filters in the airplanes don't do anything. They, they don't. They never have. That's why you ban, say, our lungs can't stop secondhand smoke. You know, hence the lawsuits. You know, like you yeah. smoke, you breathe yeah. in your partner's face for 20 years, they're, they're going down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. The, so if that's the case and virus particles are 80 times smaller than smoke, why are we why do we have airplanes flying why are no airports ever closed why did i go take like what six flights last month when no issues whatsoever nobody asked me any questions nobody tested me nobody did anything why it's because it's it's something else there's something else behind this it's it's a much much bigger issue i mean seriously it, it, i don't want to draw this out but i gotta get one more thing and that yeah. is if you're moving too late fans, now you, we're, we're already into it we're already into it now all right, well, Steve, Steven Soderbergh's masterpiece, Contagion, from 10 years ago, right? Great movie. The, it's a great movie. 
is the gold standard for pandemics. And it is almost flawless in, in, its, in its layout. And that is, if it's an actual pandemic, everything is closed. The first thing you close is the airports. Everybody knows this. You, the, the airplane is just an incubator. You close down the airports. There is no garbage service. But <clears throat> there are no grocery stores. You, know, you have the National Guard bring in food and no one goes anywhere. That's it. And, the, and it's different. This is completely different. Everyone's allowed to do like the bare minimum. And they just keep turning up the heat and keep turning. Okay, we're going we're gonna to pull back more. We're going to pull back more. We're going to pull back more to where now, you know, they're try, trying to cancel Thanksgiving. It's like you can, you can have your Thanksgiving outside, no more than a table of six. Grandma has to gnaw through her turkey. doesn't matter what the weather is. You have to eat outside. It's like, what? What are you doing in upstate New York? Are you freezing? You're like trying to, whatever. So... Just, just, just to play devil's advocate, though, for yeah. for contagion, wasn't the wasn't like the the kill ratio or the, the the deadliness of the disease like quite a bit higher than COVID, though? It was, but that that's my point. Which is, look, they in contagion, they treated it exactly like the Spanish flu. If yeah. the Spanish flu happened today, that's what contagion was about. The thing is, that's what we were sold, at least in the states. That's what we were sold right away, which was one percent kill rate. I should say death rate, whatever you want to say. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, sorry. I, I should be. Yeah, let's be. Let's no, be careful. No, screw it. Screw it. For me, I'm going to say kill rate. I'm going to change it from now on. I'm going to say kill rate. One percent kill rate and three percent kill rate if you're a senior citizen. And it was a bait and switch. It never happened. In fact, it wasn't even remotely close. And not only that, but in contagion, you either got it and you know, like anything, you know, it's, yeah. it, it just ravaged people. You know, you got it and you were scared to death of getting it. Or, you, in fact, they didn't even run into people. There was like very, very few, few people that were immune. You just didn't run into, you know, you didn't, people were scared to death of each other. Yeah. This was not it, where they're saying, what, a third of the people are asymptomatic? And there's a meme going around. It's like, it's like, sorry, if, if, if the disease is so deadly, you don't even know you have it, then it's not that deadly. Yeah. And my, I, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to make light of this, but if look look everyone's got a contact list on their phone right mm -hmm. right have you had to delete anyone from your phone because they died and if they died were they struck down that i did i did a special rant on this and let's let's end it this i did a special rant on the reason why the americans especially the americans are like like breaking curfews and going to bars and you know go, you know doing secret weddings and all this stuff is because the fear hasn't been personal you know the the old. Can I swear on this show? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you you. I mean, I'm not going to swear much. Um, you ever heard the term uh, you, when the shit gets real? Yep. Right. Yeah. It's like everything's fun and games, and then it gets real, right? And that's what never ever happened here in the states. Meaning, um, it's kind of like a horror movie where you play scary music that you know the the scary music. Oh, something's going to happen. Something's, something's coming. Gonna happen. And then nothing happens. And there's only so long you can play that scary music. And yeah. uh, find me somebody who was jogging one day, and then a week later he was on a respirator, and then a week later he was dead. There was, there's no shock and awe. That's how you make a great horror movie. You know, there's nothing that, you know, that, that's how you scare people. All of a sudden it's like, wow, I saw Tom just like two weeks ago. He's dead? You I mean, you would know people. <laughs> it's yeah. like that waitress, the guy that pumps my gas, the guy, you know, the, you would know people. And I just yeah. don't. I mean, and I'm sorry, an 80-year-old, I'm not picking on grandma, but an 80-year-old with hypertension, diabetes, lung cancer, heart disease, well, all these things, that doesn't count. I have an uncle who had a stroke last year. No, I'm sorry, two mm -hmm. years ago, right? Never, never was quite the same. Mm -hmm. Got pneumonia the beginning of this year, then finally was hospitalized, tested positive, and that's what he's going to go down as. It's like, really? So it's not the yeah. pneumonia. It's not, not the, the complications from the stroke. It's that. And sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, no, I, I, think, I think we can, we can definitely do one on, on COVID. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's go into something yeah, else. Let's, if let's you want to cut that part out, and, you know, and that's fine. I, but that is, my, that is my take. And it's just yep. getting worse. You asked how things in the States, they're horrible. Yeah. 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 Because you've got a big, you've got half the country that's absolutely on board with it. It's like, line me up with the vaccine. The other half are like going, what the hell are we going to do if we, you know, if they tie everything to the financial systems and, and the hospitals and the airports and, you know, if they tie the vaccine to that, what are you going to do? It's going to be yeah. a mess. It's going to be a huge mess. Yeah. There you go. 
Cool. So well, on that note, <laughs> that was a great, that was a good, let's, how, let's, how do we, uh, we got, well, I'm trying to figure a way to segue this into JFK. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to get, COVID gotta go, is I, the most recent conspiracy out there along with the yes. election. The oldest conspiracy I can think of, the oldest conspiracy that got me into conspiracies in general, that, that ties all my mindset together was JFK. Before JFK, I grew up, well, I grew up on, an, on a rural island, you know, near the San Juans, you know, just south of the San Juans. There's a big island called Whidbey Island. And I grew up there. And when you grew up there, you, uh, if you were born anywhere near there and you, you grew up in that system, you are very naive to everything. And it was the 80s on top of it. We were naive. Yeah. We didn't even know what gay people were. <laughs> there, yeah. there, was no, there was no gangster rap. No, nobody was angry about anything. It was pastel colors and smiles. <laughs> and everyone was, what, cocaine? <laughs> I do cocaine. But it was, it was hugs, not drugs, kids. The, um, it, but it was, it, so, so I, not, I did not believe that anyone lied about anything. I, I didn't, it's like, why would the powers that be lie about anything? It's, it's a wonderful world. <laughs> why? Everything's great. In fact, it was the early version of the, the Lego song, Everything is Awesome. Literally, it was that. I mean, that was the 80s. I, I miss it so much. <laughs> it was so great. From, from literally from 1980 to 1989, it was amazing. And then um, Nirvana came out and <laughs> everything's dark and you know, might as well have been Heath Ledger, Batman. <laughs> so I got the first conspiracy I ever got into. Remember, the internet wasn't even a thing back then in 1990. Uh, in fact, even 1990, up until 2000, it really wasn't, hadn't, hadn't done much. And I happened to see one of the very first conspiracy movies ever of any note was Oliver Stone's JFK. In, in my opinion, his masterpiece. The, it was really, it was three, three the, the, the director's cut, it's like three and a half hours long, three hours and 40 minutes long. And all the, the bonus features in the DVD, you could spend like a weekend just, just watching this damn thing. Yeah. And that was, it was the most amazing eye-opening movie for me because it ended the, the, the gloss and the shine of the 80s in one afternoon. <laughs> It was basically it. It was a packed house. You know, there was no internet, so everyone went to the theaters. It was absolute packed house. And I remember leaving with the crowd and everyone was angry. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, they were surly. It's like, damn, government, rah, rah, rah. That was like the first time I, it's like, didn't even occur to me that there could be a conspiracy that large. Well, yeah. now it's considered relatively pedestrian by comparison to yeah. other things. But it was um, what made it brilliant was that Oliver Stone, he had a fantastic way of blending his footage with actual footage to right. where I remember, and I'm see if I can find it now that I remember thinking back, because he would do the talk show circuit that year, you know, because people were talking about the movie. It was a big deal. And I remember he went on, I don't know if it was Oprah or Sally Jesse Raphael or one of those, but I remember he there were they were sending out government pr spin doctors to sit next in you know in a chair next to him to like rebuttal because people were absolutely on board with oliver stone's take it's like yeah man tell us more what about this government thing and the gut you know you had reps from whatever branch of the government it was i'm sure you know wasn't a they claimed i think they were fbi but they were trying to say, well, you know, it's an interpretation, blah, blah, blah. Like, we can assure you there was only one gunman, blah, blah, blah. And I don't yeah. think really anyone was buying it uh, <laughs> because it was done so well. The monologue to this day, the, the Donald Sutherland monologue from that movie, the Deep Throat monologue where he goes off, I think, for like eight or nine minutes. Yeah. Where he's talking to Kevin Costner and he's laying it out. He's laying out the whole thing is some of the best... It was probably the one of the, one of the finest monologues I've ever heard in cinema. Just straight up Donald Sutherland. I mean, of course, you know, because it was JFK and the, the media industry loves him. You know, they, they, they had a mat, fantastic cast. But having Donald Sutherland as Deep Throat was perfect. I couldn't, I, you couldn't have asked for anyone better. And it was, it was a fantastic thing. Um, so yeah, there's my opening for, for JFK. It is, it is a fantastic conspiracy. And to this day, I think it, you know, the numbers have gone up over the years where more and more people now believe that there was there was more to it right. in fact, I, I made a quick little sorry i know i talk a lot 
No, no, it's all there, good. There was a rant I did recently where I threw in JFK just as a sidebar. And I said, we convinced people that a lone gunman defeated the entire Secret Service, you know, our, our, our entire uh, protection agency. And then that lone gunman was then killed by a lone gunman. You know, it was right. like oh. having um, uh, an, 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 uh, an elf killed by a unicorn. You know, it's, <laughs> it's so freaking rare. It's like, really? A lone gunman and then you're going to kill him? <laughs> It's like, yeah. all right, everybody, roll credits. That's it. That's and that's that's the, how you tidy things up. Yeah, that that part was absolutely brilliant. Do I think there was even more to it than uh, the movie JFK? Yes, I do. So, yeah. uh, I, uh, but I don't want to keep talking. So, well, where do you want to go? From? I was I was gonna say too, just because just to give some context too, because I I've done uh, I wouldn't say a ton of research. You're obviously way more versed than I am. Uh, but when it kind of comes to JFK and conspiracy theories in general, there's a lot of theories out there, starting off with the, the grassy knoll. Was there somebody there? Number two, was there a, a, a second bullet? Was it the magic bullet theory? Right. Um, and also the, the fact that, hey, there might be a, another gunman or the umbrella man, which was, pr I believe the umbrella man was proved to be false because they were saying that there was that one gentleman who was standing there with the umbrella and there was theories that um he was using it as a marker for the gunman to shoot sure. or there was also specific theories saying that the actual umbrella had a like a like a gun type item or gun type contraption sure. in it but sure. that was more along the lines of like a conspiracy theory in itself because that seems quite unrealistic for that to be as um direct and as integrated I, as it should have been but yeah, i guess i guess all... for yeah sorry to interrupt you no no but, go, but ahead, go ahead my main thing would be just to kind of understand the mind of someone like yourself who hears all these theories and i'm sure there's plenty more that i'm not aware of hmm. um to kind of get a sense of what do you think what are what are your thoughts what do you think is a really strong theory what do you think we shouldn't pay attention to Okay. And all in all, what do you think? Like, what are your thoughts on this on okay. the situation? Um, yeah, I, I have absorbed way too much when it comes to JFK. There's some fantastic documentaries out there on it. Um, there's some on YouTube I think I've downloaded to my hard drive. I haven't watched in a while. But the, let's look into, because I, I actually was toying around with the idea way before I got into, you know, what I'm into now. Um, but let's get into the why first, because that, that was the line from Donald Sutherland. He was like, you know, why and you know, who had the power to cover it up? And then we'll get into um, my best choice. Okay, look, right off the bat, though, do I think there was more than one shooter? Hell yeah. <laughs> do I think there was yeah. more than one shooter? And the reason, the big reason I think that, and this is what makes me different from other conspiracy people. I don't mind going into the dark places that, um, <laughs> yeah. from, the, from the government's point of view. I right. will put myself in their shoes. One of my big qualifiers for a conspiracy is, do the ends justify the means, and is the greater good served? People, you know, love to talk about the black hats and everything super mysterious and dark and sinister, and I'm talking like... Dark. Yeah, I'm talk, talking like, like Batman, like... Christian Bale just gargling. I'm not wearing hockey marbles. pads. Yeah. I was born into it. <laughs> we'll bleep yeah. it out. I am the League of Shadows. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> so, in his case, I, 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 let, let's not sugarcoat it. JFK was a problem. He, he, had, he was doomed. He had no chance. He had to die. The reason for this was very, very simple. People will say, well, because he was going to break up the CIA or he was Catholic or, which was interesting. He was the only Catholic president ever. Um, but that, that wasn't it. Um, it was, for me, it was, he was a long-term problem. Meaning, uh, he was killed in 63, right? End of, end of 63. Yes. If he isn't killed in 63, well, what happens is 64. Well, he starts his re-election campaign. And if anyone knows anything about history, Kennedy was 
unstoppable at that point between yeah. and you can you can give some of the credit to his wife you know because they were you know the whole camelot thing they love america was absolutely in love with the with the kennedys yeah. i knew this because my parents um wedding reception dinner was the day he was um the day he was killed no way but yeah and 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 America is just the younger the better. The college students just absolutely adored. It. I mean, they they just loved the whole idea. It was very optimistic. Remember, this was before the '60s morphed into the whole Vietnam, you know, summer yeah. love. Let's you know drop acid and do all that stuff. It right. was it was very it was the kind of like the the end of the '50s really was 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 in the early '60s. So anyway, he was going to get reelected in '64. No yeah. question. I mean, the only one that probably could have beaten him would have been Jesus. That's the yeah. only person I can think. And even then, I don't think it would have been a blowout. And, th- and then he's going to go from 64 to 68. And again, if you, know, if you follow history, um, he, his brother, Robert, would have absolutely gone from, he would have just, it would have been a baton handoff. It would like, oh yeah, Bobby, 68 to 72, would have been reelected 72 to 76. At that point, we're talking 16 years of the Gandhis, right? And, and hell, at that point, you might have been for, forgiven Ted for, for the whole Chappaquiddick thing. And, yeah. and you remember the, Ted, the, the Kennedy dynasty wasn't even supposed to start with, with JFK. It was supposed yeah. to start with um, Joseph. Joe. Joseph. Uh, his, who, fa- his, his father, right? Is what well, it, well, no, no, no. His father, there was an older brother. There was an older okay. brother of Jack. They was, had a huge Catholic family. Mm-hmm. And the, a lot of daughters. There was a big fan, you know, big family all over the place. But the 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 guy who was supposed to be president at first was the older brother, and his father was really really big about it. It's like, look, you want to be president? First thing you got to do, you got to go into the military. You got to serve because you know you relate to all the the servicemen, and hopefully we can make you a war hero somewhere. So he volunteered to be one of those fighter pilots in Britain during the beginning part of the war before America really, really got into it. We had, we sent over fighter pilots and he got shot down and died. Yeah. So anyway, hmm. the point, what I'm getting at is, is that JFK was going to get reelected and yes, he was a pain in the ass. Was he going to break up the CIA? Sure. All the stuff that Donald Sutherland said he was going to do, he's probably going to do, but it wasn't just that he was going to keep going. And the powers that be, I don't care who you think they are, you know, everyone's got their favorites, you know, the best part about the, the, the true power is they stay hidden. If you, people, people, if it's like, if you ask any conspiracy person what their top 10, like rank from one to 10, the most powerful groups, oh my God, they'd be fisticuffs because people wouldn't be, well, what's the Illuminati? No, it's Council of Foreign Relations, Trilaterals, it's the Vatican, it's the Masons, it's the Jewish cabal. The Rothschilds. It's the Roth, there you go, the Rothschilds, see? And, and so on and so on. But who's number one? We don't know. And it's supposed to be that way. You're not going to know because the, the first rule of power is stay hidden. Uh, it's, it's the ultimate, ultimate power thing because you can't be a target if they don't know who you are. You can't be overthrown if they don't know your name. It's the curse and blessing of being the puppet master. So that being said, if JFK is going to be a problem and his brother, the Kennedys are going to run the show for 16 years. No, <laughs> sorry. That could yeah. have because it's like no, we got we got to end this thing now. In fact, we have to end it before sixty four because that's when the election process starts. It's like, oh, you got up for re-election, and then the, the the spotlight's on you a lot more. So that's that's why they had to take him out. And by the way, don't think that's a, you know that's a stretch because look what happened with Bobby, right? That was a message. That was a warning shot to Bobby, saying, yeah. "Don't you even think about running." And what do you, so what do you think happened? It's like the second he's, oh, yeah, you know, get in the primaries. It's like, no, <laughs> you're not even going to, we're not even going to let you get out of California. You know, send, send the assassin, you know, look up the, the Bobby Kennedy, exper- you know, conspiracy. You know, he, was, he was taken out and, and he, you know, lone mad gunman from yeah. the Middle East. It's like, really? Now, uh, not, not, not to sidebar, but the Bobby Kennedy one, that's the one where he was giving that speech. Yep. And he left the podium. Goes through the, the kitchen. Goes to the kitchen and the guy shot him. And the guy is still in jail today. He's still alive in jail. Oh, what's his face? He's still it's, he's still alive. He's still alive. I, I remember reading up about that recently. He's in his eighties, I think. By the way, on a sidebar, sidebar, do you know that I just watched a video? I should send it to you. You remember Happy Days? Yes, with Fonz. Right, remember the Fonz. Miss, Mrs. Cunningham, Marion Ross, uh, from Cunningham. from Happy Days. She uh, she just did a fl- her daughter her granddaughter just did a flat Earth video with her. She doesn't like it, but that, I was like, 
Is that Marion Ross? Marian yeah, Marion Ross. Ross. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm watching this. I'm going, Marion Ross is still around? She's 92. <laughs> wow. And she she's living in some like complex in uh, near the beach in California. And is like, she was like, oh no, I learned it was a globe. And blah, blah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, hold on. I'm just. I'm actually just looking. Just bear with me one second. I'm, just, I'm a quick Googler here. Oh, you, you want, 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 make, you want me to make send that you the video? That. Here. His, his name is uh, Sirhan Bishara Sirhan. But yeah, I remember yeah. that. Sir, the the by, short version is Sirhan Sirhan. Sir, Sirhan Sirhan, yeah. yeah. And uh, no, he's still alive. He is currently. Hold on, if I can ask. I'm sorry. Who, I'm, not, I'm not as well versed as you guys with this too. Who did he kill? Sorry. Bo Bobby Kennedy. Name? Bobby, Bobby Kennedy. Oh, yeah, Bobby well, Kennedy. Yeah, Robert because F. again, Kennedy. that the, the, the public was so in love with the whole Kennedy concept that that when Jack went down, the everyone was like, look, it's like, well, maybe Bobby could run. There was no conspiracy back then, you know, from the general yeah. public. There was no conspiracy. The the whole reopening of the files later, that hadn't happened. They're like, well, yeah. it was a lone gunman. He was obviously crazy, and he's gone anyway. And then, you know, Bobby. I don't know what he was thinking, honestly. Yeah. Was like, what what the hell was going through your mind just then? You didn't hear the rumors, the word on the street, wow. and and yeah, he didn't even get as far, you know, not even close to where. I mean, yeah, he was he, he gave the speech, he goes in the kitchen, and you, if you look at the conspiracy, it looked like it was machine gun fire, and yeah. and there were more than one. And what's his face was the patsy, Sirhan Sirhan, and he wasn't killed. Because people yeah. weren't as in love with him as Jack, but um, and then Ted right. just became Ted was the smart one. Okay, so let's get into um, let's get into the the who done it. You know the the clue. Um, you know it was the the butler in the kitchen with the knife with the candlestick. You know who who was it? Who you know because everyone's got their favorite. Um, you know, do I think it was Oswald? No, of course not. Uh, Oswald was, was a great patsy and in fact he was he almost blew it that's why I mean he was he was so vocal by the way about it that that's why they had to take him down he wasn't going to shut up <laughs> so, you know he, eventually they, they what I've learned about the powers that be is they don't take chances it's kind of like the mob you know you've, you've seen some of the mob movies like even if they, yeah. they even have a glimmer that you're going to rat <laughs> It's, it's like, game oh. over. <laughs> and it's like, oh, get get some some plastic for the trunk. <laughs> um, so, which was kind of like the, um, I mean, I saw it in uh, uh, different things, but I love the uh, or the one from Heat. <laughs> they just, where they absolutely completely plastic lined it, and it was like, oh yeah, we're gonna oh, walk yeah, you yeah. out and and take you out and just throw it in the trunk. Great movie. Um, they don't they don't take chances. So, if there were multiple shooters. Here, here's what here's okay here's my initial thought and was that there were more i think there were layers of 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 he was never there was a line from from jfk the movie which was so just just resonated with me it gave me chills which was you know the when he was talking about the multiple shooters and i think there's even more than that where where he said he was not going to be allowed to get out of there alive meaning there was no, there was no, they were never, ever, it was never, ever going to happen, which is why I think that why the car slowed down. Right. And, you know, it's like, it's, you know, I think that even this, remember, the, we're talking about soldiers. No, no offense to the Secret Service, no offense to the alphabet groups who may be listening to this, um, but they're, they're paid to follow orders. Okay? No different than astronauts. You know, astronauts are soldiers. They're, in fact, they're colonels or higher in rank. Um, Secret Service, not as high, but they're as dedicated. And look, they will follow orders to the end. It doesn't matter. Whoever gives them the direct orders, they follow it. That's what they do. And so if they're told, it's like, look, you know, it, they're not, they're, they're kind of like spies in a way, but they're more direct. Kind of like the way I tell people when, the, when we talk about um, different conspiracies and why people do things, like, look, they're just cogs in a machine. When you send out a sniper, a spy, he's, you're, you, you know, you've seen the movies. That's yep. very, very true, which is like, look, you get a folder, you're going to see this guy walk out of a hotel lobby. <laughs> You're going to shoot them from over here in this building and you're going to get the hell out of there. And here's your passport. Here's your money. The spy doesn't get the backstory. He doesn't care why the guy's in the lobby. He doesn't care who they're, they're tied with. He's given a job. Yeah. He's given a job to do. So do I think, there's a reason why I'm mentioning this. Do I think the Secret Service, you know, because there were six people in the car, right? You had the, the driver, you had the bodyguard right next to him who was riding shotgun. You had Connolly and his wife in the middle. And you had Jackie and um, Jack on the, um, sorry, John, 
um, in, the, in the back seat, respectively. And uh, do I think there were rifle guys shooting from multiple, you know, grassy knoll and other places? Sure. And, you know, I love the, the idea that there was somebody in the drain, you know, in the sewer drain with a shotgun. Mm. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Just in case. But the Zabruder <laughs> film came out. They didn't need to, and remember, they, it was released by the government after the fact. They got the original copy. There's been lots of people that have said that there were frames missing, that there was something else happening in the background with the Zabruta film. The people, I, I know I'm older, but if, if you're new yeah. to this, look up the Zabruta film. The, the only film of John getting, getting right. shot. Now, 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 not to once, so the Zabruta film was, that was filmed by, was that just, that was that. Zabruta. Was it, it was a, the Zabruta, was he just a civilian or was he? Yeah, so, well, that, uh, that's just it. He was, suppose, again, you can't, Take it with a grain of salt. Um, there's right. an old saying, which I love, which is trust everyone, but count your change. Yeah. Which is like, okay, I mean, was it actually him? Sure. The bigger question, because people forget how things get into public, which is, this, remember, this was the 60s. The yeah. Zabruder film was confiscated by the government and then released to the press. Yeah. They didn't have to do that. Right. At all. But it lent... It, the way it was done, apparently, whatever. Now, did the, could they have snipped a few frames out? Sure, um, it, but there's some things in it which I, I, which, which, is, which are telling. And you can look this up. There's some, some. The theory that I like about the Zabruta film was that the fallback position. The, of course, Oswald was just the fall guy. He didn't take any shots. Never would. By the way, I'm a shooter. <laughs> that rifle was absolutely. When they described it, it was a piece of crap. No one would ever shoot with that rifle. Plus, he was an American Marine. He would use an M14 straight yeah. up. He could have gotten one very, very easily with his military background. Easily. Doesn't really, plus, he would never have shot from that angle. He would have shot as he was coming up the street. Oswald, just take him out of it. The other shooters, shooting from multiple, you know, shooting a mo moving target through people, you know, in the, in the limo would have been tough. I think the fallback position was always the one that they were always, you know, they were hoping that wasn't going to happen, but they did. And my theory is that it was the driver himself, meaning he had, um, okay. he, that he shot him with a handgun, left-handed over his right shoulder. Uh, and the, he, they used the special, which we don't really talk about, the, uh, the special CIA rounds, which, have, um, which are poison rounds. A lot of people, by the way, don't understand that you can poison bullets never, ever, ever talked about in, in like military, even spy movies. It is so okay. amazingly easy to make poison bullets and nobody talks about it because they, they just, I don't know why they don't. It's never issued to law enforcement. Maybe they're worried about a ricochet, but that he was shot over his right shoulder. And that's why he, you know, why it was so easy to do. Well, relatively easy because it was within six feet. But that, the, that for me, the thing that got me was Jackie trying to get out of that car afterwards you know shots coming shots coming and then think about this jackie all of a sudden watches a guy who's six feet in front of her turn around and, and put a hole in her husband's head what do you think your first instinct's gonna do she's gonna try to get away from it she's climbing off the trunk of a moving car that's starting to speed up and the secret service has to come in and get her back into the car that's that's my uh that's my take on who you know was it you know the butler with the candlestick yeah i think it was the driver you okay, I, I think so there were other shooters i think he was the fallback fallback position and i think if you look at the zabruta film closely there's a little glint of something along those okay. lines it wouldn't have been a, that tough a shot for him, for I, him to do so i have i have two follow-up questions for you sure go ahead so you, you were saying that um just you don't believe Lee, Ar Lee Harvey Oswald had anything to do with it? Not like not well, other other than he was he hired to. No, no. In fact, I don't even think he was even hired to, um, to do anything to the president. I in fact, I don't even know what his connection was other than he was. I I don't know, but he my, but he wasn't going to take a shot. My question though, because I remember watching. I don't remember the exact documentary. It was on YouTube, no. um, but they were saying that. The area at the Texas School, Texas book School book, book Depository, book right? Book Depository, yep. In that in that window where he sh where he allegedly shot his bullets, there was um, 
uh, rounds that were Shell left cases. there. Yeah. And they matched the exact bullet that was found in JFK. <laughs> Yeah. Is that correct? Is that well, correct? yeah, 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 sure. But you got to remember that was they were always going to say that they were all right. they, that was that was part of the cover story, which is you have to match. Come on, we've seen this even in even local, well, mostly TV and movies. But yep. to fake to fake a ballistics report, that is not tough to do at all. You just say, in fact, that which is part of the JFK myth and legend, which is the pristine bullet. You know, which is a forget about the the winding around bullet stuff. Look, I shoot bullets fragment on impact. It's it's lead jacketed with copper. They yeah. absolutely will. They turn into a mushroom and they turn into just nothing, just a ball of goo. And this bullet came out and it was found, <laughs> you know, next to the body, and it was absolutely pristine, shiny. They didn't have a not, not even anything on it. No, 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 no. It was so it was. The, the the there there was a mo a secondary monologue in the movie, which I loved so much, which was Oswald was supposedly you know when he left when he when he figured out that he was he was on the hook for something, you know they, they had already put out it's like oh yeah it was leave Harvey, Harvey Oswald supposedly walks through a neighborhood, and then a cop pulls him over he shoots him and the, the big thing for me was he goes to you know he's he's a, he's gonna get away scott clean but instead of paying the 75 cents for a movie ticket you know he just goes in and and of course she calls the cops on a guy who didn't uh didn't pay for his admission to the movie ticket and that was it he was he was nabbed right then and there he did everything wrong that well or he panicked in this case but why why, yeah. why, why? I don't know. I don't know what the, the mystery with Oswald, which we'll never, ever know for sure, is what he was supposed to do in the first place. Because one thing we know is he was never supposed to kill the president. Or maybe he was scheduled to do something later, but I think he was just placed in that building to be the guy. To, do, you think that, do, you, do you think that he was um, placed in there prior, or do you think after after the fact they... Do you think? Like, oh, I mean, the school, the book suppository, or yeah, depository, depository? yeah. Like, do you think it was planted the stuff after, or did, or was there a legitimate timeline in place after he left that area that is proven that he was there at that time? You mean like when where he supposedly shot the cop dead? Yeah, to, to yeah. It, and then, well, that's just it. I, you don't. Nothing can be completely confirmed after no timeline that the the government says can be confirmed other than he was arrested in that theater that's the that's the only thing that you can know because he was supposedly arrested in the theater but yeah the, no they they already they they talked about that in the movie which was no the the, the guy that killed the, the cop wasn't him which by the way was another thing you could do if you wanted to amp up the net because everyone knows the cop killer thing once a cop is killed it's all hands on deck Everybody's running around looking for him. You know, then you've got the local police just going berserk like an angry beehive. Uh, so it was it was a brilliant, well, almost brilliant, almost brilliant uh, way to do it, and then again kill the guy before he even comes close to trial. That yeah. was that was the best part of it, which was okay, because he was he was too adamant. He, he's it, after probably listening to him or the report, you know, whoever he was talking to, he was too, not necessarily believable, but th there's a, something I'd like to say, which is all things being equal. If you have enough conviction, you, people will believe you, you know, they, and he was talking which, to, you know, they didn't want him anywhere in a courtroom, which so is so true. You create Jack Ruby and it's like oh yeah and were there connections did they know each other yeah possibly you know fall guys are fall guys it's, it's common in crime how do you know or maybe he was promised something betrayed at the last minute now my another question just for my second follow-up yeah you were saying that you believe the driver shot jfk i think yeah mm -hmm. I, th I think secret service was the fallback meaning sooner or later you had to shoot him in public so and if there were any witnesses you remember in the movie you know <laughs> the eyewitnesses that were anywhere close died of you know single car accidents and plane crash and and all this stuff you know people that that were adamant it's like no 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 but they i don't think any of them maybe saw the driver they probably saw they kept talking about the grassy knoll because they were close to it 
but I, yeah, I do think in this case, the, the backup plan was somebody very, very close. Now in the Zapruder film itself, is there any, any inkling that there actually might be a shot by the driver? I think there is. I okay. think if you look close enough, because remember, if you, the sidearms they were using back in the 60s would have been, well, would have been the 1911. Um, could he have used a suppressed round? Sure, there would have been no muzzle flash and a poison bullet just to be sure. Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. um, a 45 would have done that to his head at, at that, at that sort of range. Now, if you look at this Bruder film close enough, I've looked at it a million times, does it look like there's a glint of something? Sure. You know, they, possibly, but can it be proved? No, because if you remember the Zabruder film, that's the, the big key here, was released by the government themselves. If the, it actually showed without a doubt, you know, that, that's all, yeah, there's a driver spun around and, and took a shot, but he did turn around. I do know that. And he was holding his, something in his left hand. Does it show a, a muzzle flash? No. Uh, could there have been, could have been, it wasn't a sunny day in November. So might have so been Mark, tough to see. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Is that, is that the part where you think that there was part of the footage that was actually like either tampered with or that was, that was removed? Can you, can you go into a bit about that? Sure. There's a brutal, you can remember this was the early sixties. So you know, television was fairly new. You had radio, you had newspapers. And so information didn't get around that quickly. The The things that bothered me, about the Zabruder film, which most people miss, is that it was as confiscated by the government immediately. You know, Zabruder, you know, Zabruder's like, oh yeah, film the whole thing, grab him, you know, along with the other witnesses. I think he lived, by the way, which, which makes sense because you want him to live, you don't want him dying. And then it was released to the media. I don't know how many days it took, I should probably look, it's been a while since I looked at the JFK stuff. But if it was released to the media days later, then or a week later then and the public didn't see it for a while i don't know if they affected i should we should look that up and see when it was aired on television or when the public had a chance to see it but is do i think there were frames missing yes there's been all sorts of people that have talked about it and the, but the, but then you're running into massive speculation on what exactly was was taken out you know were there other other people in position that were you know there weren't a lot of frames missing we don't th we don't think, but yeah. then again, the frames we're talking about antiquated technology. We're talking about the frames per second, yeah. which now has been stitched together to where now there's people. There's some wonderful um, guys that have that have done stabilization of of how it looks. Uh, but that's what I think. Do I think there was stuff missing? Yes. Do I think the drive? You know, the driver was there were frames taken out of the driver thing. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, only because he could have just gotten lucky. <laughs> Where do you where do you think that would have been editor at Tate and Committee? Because when I when I when you're saying that, because obviously during that time it'd be hard to edit, but also for what what specific parts are you talking about? Is it is it right when you think that that's probably when he shot him? Is that the part you're referring to? Is it, or is it before? Well, I, the other people other people have talked about the frames missing way before that. In fact, I'm really surprised more people haven't haven't paid attention to the driver, because in any sort of fallback situation. I mean, you've got to have a, a, a fallback. And if you've got, you've got to make it public because you can't have him, I mean, you could have him alive actually without this. You know, the more I think about it now that you guys have got me going down this road, yeah. it's almost like without the Zabruder film, it's way tougher to push the narrative. And the Zabruder film, what am I missing? Are you I have okay? no idea. What's Mike doing? I have no I clue. apologize. I'm just getting, I'm just coughing up a little bit. That's all. That's all right. So, so, Sorry, um, so, um, what I was, what I was getting at was without the Zabruder film, it was, I think when it was released, it was absolutely necessary. So, but why more people didn't focus on the driver? Well, maybe that was the whole point was, you know, you, the, the line from Donald Sutherland was very, very telling which was he said everything else, you know, the, the who and why, it was all, you know, just parlor game, you know, just getting people to guess. I mean, most people can't even, you, you find 10 people on the street, you can't even get them to agree on who did it. Yeah. You know, you, you, people say, oh, it's the mafia, it's the Cubans, it's the, um, it's the CIA, it's, you know, my, a lot of people, it's like, look, the people that were closest to him were the Secret Service. And it's like, well, the well, Secret Service protects the president. It's like, yeah, but they get their orders from another group 
And people think that the president is the highest, you know, the, the highest on the, on the totem pole. He is, he is octaves below people that are, that are up there. Um, the, the running joke, which I, we did in movies for years, people just don't understand it, which is like, in, especially in the United States, we convinced people in, in movies and television that the president of the United States had a briefcase, which he could basically open up at any time and push the button and just destroy <laughs> Russia. Right. Yeah. It's like he has his finger on the button. Ronald Reagan has his finger on the button. Oh my God. And it's like, no, <laughs> the, the president of the United States, even now has a salary of what? 400 grand a year. <laughs> like, what, yeah. What? That's nothing. He's just, he's literally just a figurehead that he's just a, he's just a plate. He might as well be his own press secretary. That's all he mm -hmm. is. And so the secret service, look, they're military. They take their orders from generals. And if the general says, look, you gotta take, or, you know, they, they're not even going to tell him why. It's, there, there's an old, old saying that you've heard me say this a million times, which is, is above your pay grade. You know, you're not even allowed to ask, you know, not only do you get to not to know why you don't even get to ask it's, it's above your pay grade. Yeah. And yeah. again, no different than the sniper, but the sniper, you know, when he shoots the guy outside the hotel, he doesn't even ask, he doesn't even get to ask, well, why did I shoot that guy? He knows, he knows better. It's like you just shoot the guy, you do your job, you collect your paycheck, you go home, and hopefully you won't get set up later for something. Yeah. Which, so, which, which, which makes you wonder because with all these guys, you know, with all these assassination attempts in the past, yeah, um, it just makes you wonder like what's actually going on. It seems to be too convenient of a of a story for it to be like, look, it was just this guy he acted alone. This is what happened, and obviously, like you don't want to, you don't want to play into it too hard but at the same time you do want to rationalize this and make make some sense of it and try to you know come up with a theory like i mean at the end of the day it's not really it's not really theories it's just trying to understand what what happened and you come up with all these things and it's and it is easy to for some people to get sucked into certain areas and to to believe in certain things yep. but someone like yourself it seems like you obviously have done your research and you have a multiplicity of, of, of ideas and thoughts and you're able to kind of converse them into something that makes a little bit more sense and that you can talk about, which is good because um, it is, it is fascinating with, with this whole theory because, you know, there's so many different elements to it and there's so many different YouTube videos, so many different books written on it. I guess uh, in terms of that, it's just such a, it's so hard and convoluted for someone to go, Hey, where do I start? If I want to read about this, if, where do I go? It, if you want to, yeah, if you want to start anywhere, well, honestly, I would start with JFK the movie because it's it's so comprehensive in the in the overview, in, and that is it, it gives you at least the the players. What I love is because I've been doing this long enough that it we're not it it created a brand new you know we, we've heard of like movie formulas you know like the buddy cop picture the romantic comedy that's the plucky sidekick um it created literally out of thin air the lone gunman theory to where nowadays i mean that is it is it's a running joke in the conspiracy world with to where there was a television show in the 90s called the lone gunman which was yeah. based off a group called the lone gunman from the x-files it goes all the way back um which is you create in and this that I will say that whoever came up with that persona, gold star, because you created basically a crazy loner that is killing someone, you know, going after a big target for no apparent reason other than to satisfy, you know, a, a weird thing, you know. And now, granted, there are some some loners out there that that do odd stuff. Uh, Ted Kaczynski. A perfect example, you know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Unabomber, you know, lives in a shack in the middle of nowhere and figured out a way to mail bombs. That one was really interesting, too. That would be yeah, something really good to get into. Weird guy, but very, very intelligent. And quick, quick, quick question for you, because it's obviously it sounds like you're you're well versed in that one as well. Just a just a quick sidebar yeah. that um, Unabomber series on Netflix. Did you watch that? I haven't yet. Was it good? OK, it was awesome. And I was curious if, if it was at all with like correct in terms of fact and but, but you'll have yeah, you'll i will have, have to you'll I, have to watch that I, you know yeah. considering the amount of netflix i've watched this year i i probably should Same. get into it what's do you, yeah. do you remember what the series is called yeah i think it's just called unabomber but let me just confirm for you that would that would seconds. make sense because you'd want something that was obvious because if you said oh yeah you know the it's, life it's, of ted they wouldn't probably yeah. oh plus ted you couldn't use that because that was a teddy bear movie 
true. But it's, uh, it's actually it, it's actually called Manhunt Unabomber. No, oh, it's good enough. Yeah, okay, make sure you check it out. It's really good. But um, not to get off track, I'll let. No, sorry about fine. that. Go ahead. Um, Manhunt but yeah, Unabomber. going back to what you were saying. Um, oh yeah, Lo- about, the lone yeah. gunman. The lone gunman was created by JFK, and because of that, now and it worked. And people, there's an old old. <laughs> you've heard the sayings and uh which is uh don't mess with if if it's working don't mess with it you know don't mess with the formula and so every once in a while they run out the they roll out the um the the lone gunman theory they can attach it to just about anything and they will use that term very often in the media they'll say they'll just say oh yeah lone gunman lone gunman lone gunman very very scary people can snap at any time and just and just lose it now, granted, you run in, I don't remember the guy's name, but every, yeah, every once in a while, and I can't remember if it was before, you should look that up. The, um, the guy at the first clock tower, you know, the clock tower jokes. He went to that yeah. campus and was it Texas? I can't remember, but he went to the clock tower with sniper rifle and just started picking off people. He had the ultimate vantage point and the cops were like, holy crap, what do we do? Yeah. I mean, they couldn't reach him. Yeah. And um, th- that, yeah, that was a true lone gunman. And I think they may have even just kept, you know, rolling. Every once in a while, you run into. Okay, let's go down that road a little bit, a few times. The um, the Vegas shooter, which most people have completely forgotten by now, right? It was like a huge death toll, supposedly. Unfortunately, and again, I'm a shooter, so I can tell you this firsthand. And I've talked to plenty of shooters, which is given the range and the floor. He was on what 40th floor or something. He was way the hell up there, and his he was way 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 off way too far and he was using nothing but five five six rifles standard military issue infantry pieces of crap no offense to people to colt hey rock on man um (laughs) but it's like you ask any shooter and you say you you say if i gave you a million dollars to pull that job off from the uh from from that position but yet or i could give you half a million and you could choose your own rifle Every single one of them said, oh, yeah, I wouldn't use a 5.56. Why would you use a 5.56? doesn't even make sense. You couldn't hit crap from there with a 5.56. It does, it, you're shooting just a tiny, tiny, tiny bullet. But again, why did I mention that? Lone gunman. We see the lone gunman, the, the Sandy Hook thing. Lone gunman. Uh, uh, Boston bombing. Two lone gunmen, kind of. But it, wasn't even, it was lone bombers, which is a whole other thing. But yeah, it's one of those things where Kennedy's can, the Kennedy thing started it all, which was it was just a lone guy. Therefore, we can and because and the reason why you do that is because you can tie up that loose end quicker than anything else. You can't have a group of people. When, when's the last time you saw anything that happened in this country with a group of people that, right. that did this? Because because otherwise you go, oh, you got three of these guys running around still. People get scared. You're gonna lock down stuff. You don't you don't want that happening. Lone gunman. Mm-hmm. You hunt them down, you, you have them do the job or whatever, or they're the patsies, they do whatever, and then you tie it off before the public can get freaked out. It's like, oh, they got them. They got them. That's good. I can go back to whatever I was doing, watching Happy Days. Yeah. Yeah, that, you know, that'd be nice. That would definitely be nice. And, 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 but now my question to you, yeah. um, going back to um, JFK and the thought of this lone gunman, mm-hmm. um, my my question was with the grassy knoll yep. because there's that there's that other film by that woman who was there is that that's a separate film right was i forget the yeah, name but it of didn't, it uh, no, i don't sorry, know not not a film but it was a still image wasn't it right when the president was about yeah, to get shot yeah it the, the grassy no i don't get me wrong i am not discounting the grassy knoll in the slightest do okay. I think there were multiple? Do I think there was a guy in the grassy knoll? Yes. Do I think they were trying to triangulate him? Sure. Uh, is it tough? A lot tougher than people. You know, it's not like the movies where people are John Wicking. You know, everyone, nobody's missing ever. Although John Wick was shooting point blank range, it's yeah. tough. They, they 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 talked about this in the movie. It's tough to hit a moving target for real. You know, when with a with a rifle. You know, when you're, it's a do or die situation. There's a lot of pressure on you. You know, people, it's like, oh, you know, you don't know windage. You don't know. It's like, oh, you know, he's coming at an angle. People miss. People miss all the time. It's, it's staggering the amount of times people miss in, in armed conflict. And so in this case, yeah, you know, do, 
do I think that the shot that hit him the first get remember let's let's you know let's backtrack to the, the first thing forget about the headshot the you know the shot in the neck he got shot in the neck before he got hit in the head and that's when he was clutching his throat so, so the question you, is do you think that he got shot twice by the driver then like not no the... no I don't no I think okay. I think the rifle was the the first shot I I whoever it was was it, let's just let's just go for argument's sake um and say the grassy knoll was the next shot okay why, why not you know it could have been very very possible um the the next shot but he was fully you know he was you know going for his neck it's like holy crap i got shot in the neck and jackie was helping him blah 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 and then the second that headshot you know then she tries to crawl off the car but do i yeah that would go into the whole multiple shooters thing you know that you mm. you try to hit him from as many different angles you've got it covered as much as possible but then you've got the fallback the the drop dead you know play on words there um you know the, the last the last ditch effort and so do i think the guy you know could have been the guy in the grassy knoll that got the next shot sure why not no one i, I do about yeah else. It's the grassy knoll. i do have a question of that just to kind of challenge you a little bit um my question would be why why do you think that there would be a rifle shot first and the only reason for that is just because one of the i know one of the rules of firearms is at least know your target know your background know what's know what's around were they not concerned about um jackie kennedy or maybe hitting the driver or or anything like oh, that yeah, or... which, which, yeah good point and yes yeah. you're you're absolutely right they they were you know you didn't <laughs> okay if you if they wanted to come on well let's let's call it what it is they wanted yeah. to they could have laid waste to that car oh, they yeah. could have done it remember this was surgical if they wanted to blow up the car, they could have blown up the car. If they wanted someone with an M60, which was around then, like a guy with a belt-fed M60 on the bridge, just, just turn that thing into Swiss cheese. But they tried to make it as surgical as possible. So, we remember who was sitting in the middle seats. When, when Connolly got shot in the arm, he panicked. And Connolly, who supposedly knew but kept yeah. his mouth shut, his initial statement was, if you remember, it's like, they'll kill us all. <laughs> because Connolly <laughs> wasn't expecting to get hit. He was told, it's like, no, it'll be a surgical okay. hit and no one will care. You know, these guys are professional. You know, he was told, like, you'll be fine. You're fine. And so when he gets, when his wrist gets almost taken off, he's now, he's totally freaking out. He's like, oh my God. And, you know, he, again, he shut up and he, I think, lived to a ripe old age. I mean, although he was already in his 50s or 60s when, when that happened. But, yeah. so yeah, yeah, there absolutely was a risk. And I'm sure they told people, it's like, do whatever you do, don't hit Jackie. Yeah. You know, don't, you know, if you have to err, err, go left, you know, if you yeah. can. And not, a, she was not hit. She was not winged. Yeah, you know, she had blood on her when she was, no, let's, in fact, that could have been, you know what? new train of thought remember after the next shot she leaned in to him that's right and she because she's like oh my god you know got she didn't know what the hell was happening but she was right. so close at that point that maybe the rifles because you know, they had earpieces maybe the rifles were pulled off at that point it's like nope don't have it don't have it and it's like fine you know drop whatever code name for driver was uh yeah number one you're you're up do it and that and that was it. And then she realized, well, we're we're in trouble. And John Connolly again kept his mouth shut. That uh, that's interesting because hmm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that because it. I mean, it sounds interesting. The fact that I mean, these are all hypotheticals, obviously. Sure. But and these are all theories. But hmm, the fact well, that well, you know what wasn't hypothetical though was the the magic bullet. Which I love the monologue, which is that memory, one's interesting. because everyone kept saying that John, because no one, the official report is that he was shot twice, both okay. from the back, you know, from, and, from, and, and the one bullet went through his back into his left thigh. Uh, no, well, went through his neck. Well, yeah, the back of his neck through his throat into John Conley's arm, right. left his arm, circled back in. <laughs> And yeah. then, you know, when it, it was ridiculous. It, I mean, literally, supposedly hung in air, hung in the, the air for like a second and a half for no yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. And, and all this stuff. But, but then the second shot supposedly also came, came from the back of the head. But when you, you know, you know, 
when when he kicked his head back, that's not how his head would have gone. You know, you've seen this clip a million mm-hmm. times. Yeah. So that that part is in dispute. What is in dispute is where you know how many how many again how many shooters were there? That by the way, that was the witnesses. The one the witnesses that were died of accidental causes. <clears throat> they all were the same. They all had the same story, which was no. They heard multiple shots, four or five shots, some even more. People say no, it was echoes from around you, and you know, they were very enthusiastic about it. It's like no, it wasn't. And then, of course, anyone that even claimed they saw something from the grassy knoll, they were done, including the the people on the other side of the fence, the people that said that the guy that was setting up was dressed like a cop, which was what you would do. And you address them as as law enforcement. Not not tough to do because if you were at you were asking earlier, for example, why you would use rifles, right? Why why use rifles instead mm-hmm. of blowing up the car or machine gun and stuff like that? Because you when it comes to the general public, it's kind of like a bank robbery. You there's an unknown factor there, meaning you don't know you 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 don't want to run into like a hero. <laughs> Guy was in Vietnam and well. We're, early Vietnam, you know, some, someone who's got a, a hero complex, you don't want to deal with those guys. So you want whoever's shooting as far away as possible so they can just shoot, blend in, get the hell out of Dodge. The last thing you want to do is have somebody, it's like, you know, because like, for example, if the shot was absolutely came in the grassy knoll and there was like part of a, let's say a college football team in front of there, it's like, hey, let's get them. What are you going to do? That guy's toast. Unless you've got a backup plan for him, you know, you've got to get them, you know, you've got to have a driver for him. You've got to have him put on his gear, you know, put on his gear, walk away and, and get away as clean as possible. That's why you use rifles. Keep as, keep them as far away from the target as possible. Yeah. You can't have a guy sitting there with an M60 on the bridge. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know I'm treating this tactically. Remember, this is, this is what I would do. Yeah. The, um, if the guy's on the bridge and with a belt fed M60, well, he's going to get pinned people are going to know exactly who he is and they're he's not going to get away rifles can get away he's not just going to kill one person with an m60 either <laughs> no no he's not and plus he you're also you yeah you could remember there were secret service cars but in front in back the the big thing of course the big dead giveaway was the the convertible top was completely taken off it's like oh yeah it was a sunny day it's like who cares it violates just about everything we know about about security you don't you don't do that and yeah, oh, it, was, that, it was a smooth operation. Um, so in terms of resources, so let's say somebody wants to learn about this or find out more information about the theories that you're expressing. Like, for example, the, the shooting of the, or not the shooting, but the driver shooting behind his, his neck and shooting GFK. Are right. there any resources on that? Because oh, I haven't personally heard of that. One second. Oh, I can I can show you where I started, which was sorry, my microphone. Uh, which was there was a documentary series, a six parter. Uh, let me see where it was initially, and I can send it to you guys if you're interested. Please, yeah. Um, it was done by. It was called Kennedy. Evidence, okay. uh, evidence of revision. That's what it's called. Kennedy Evidence of Revision. It's a six-part series, pre-HD. So you have to wear, you know, watch it in four by three format. Yep. But it's uh, that's well worth it. When it comes to the whole driver thing, that's going to be tougher. You're going to have to do some digging on your own because it was it's fringe even for Kennedy people. Okay. Uh, you know, there's there's stuff out there. You know, but it's. It's tough, tough. It's a tough call. I just know that if you were going to, it felt right when I first, I didn't come up with it on my own. Um, it felt right when I first saw it because we don't like to accept the fact that we, you know, we think, we think black hats and white hats, you know, I think with very definitive lines in that, oh, well, you know, the, any, any, <laughs> we all know better now. It's like, you know, the FBI and the CIA and the NSA and DOD and everybody else and Secret Service, they're all absolute G.I. Joe Boy Scouts, right? They don't do anything wrong ever. They're, they're all, um, oh, Jack Ryans. They're all freaking Jack Ryans, every single one of them. No, it's absolutely the opposite. <laughs> 
I mean, that, that was the whole point is that Jack Ryan in the Tom Clancy um, stories was, was, was an albatross. He's, he had this moral compass that was like, would not deviate where everybody else around him is like, look, I, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to be a downer when I say this. We all know there, I'll, I'll, I'll be as soft as I can. We all know there are conspiracies out there. We know this. In, in, there are media sanctioned conspiracies when they never use the word conspiracy. When, they, when media does it, they, they, it's either a scandal or unless somebody dies and then it's a, a tragedy. And if it's outside of the media, if the media doesn't put their stamp on it, then it's a conspiracy. But we all know in business and politics and sports and entertainment and yes, even journalism and, and science, there are conspiracies all day long. Conspiracy literally, I should know because it's part of the legal system, um, that all you need, a conspiracy is just three or more people conspiring to do something illegal or unethical. That's all it is. And so, in fact, here, I'll give you a quick example of it. Um, if you decide to rob a bank, Mike, on your own, okay. then you are charged with armed robbery, right? Okay. However, if you and four of your, well, three of your friends, two of your friends, actually, let's just say three, you and a group of your friends decide to rob a bank, you'll get charged twice. Once for armed robbery and two for conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Right. And so, look, the people, there's conspiracy. The difference between me and other people, not necessarily the mouth-breathing troglodytes that walk the sidewalks, but is that there? It's a comfort zone, and that is, I'm willing to look at just about any conspiracy. Whereas they, it's outside of their comfort zone, they don't want to look at it. That's like, okay, fine. Tom Brady erased all his cell phone data, but that doesn't mean that JFK was there was two, there was multiple gunmen, or but it's like, look, Enron happened. Um, p producers completely take advantage of every wannabe starlet in Hollywood. Uh, you know, things happen. All in po politics, there's conspiracies all day long. Look, even in journalism, the, there's all sorts of fun conspiracies out there. Most of it's sex related, but sometimes it's just straight up lies. So the, things like this happen. Why am I saying this? Because the secrets could have, you know, if it was the driver, then yeah, the Secret Service was was involved. Why? Why not? Why? Why not? Why? Why yeah. would you let them off the hook? The Americans run the entire heroin trade out of Afghanistan. That's not a big secret. We run it. This is what we do. We, we figured out that it was way easier to grow heroin in Afghanistan than Vietnam and much more pleasant in the desert. All we have to deal with is some armed rebels every once in a while. So yeah. having, the, having one guy, again, the psychological profile, every one of these people before they put them in that position and they ask them, they basically say, we, are you willing to file, follow orders even if it goes against your morals? That's all it is. In fact, the, the great, the, the great example of that would have been, sorry, I don't want to drag this out. Um, you remember the movie with John Cusack, Gross Point Blank? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. Uh, okay, maybe. watch it if you get a chance. It's from late 90s where um, he, he was basically a high school guy who disappeared and went back to his class reunion 10 years later. But during that time, he went to the military, was recruited by the CIA, CIA became a spook. And during that, and became a contract killer, basically. And during that, it was this wonderful little monologue where he was talking about, you know, after he was recruited, and they, you know, they give you tests. And they found that he had a certain moral flexibility. Which basically means that's what you, what you would need if you're a contract killer. You know, it's like, look, you're going to go kill people. It's like, it's not, it's not personal. It's just, and if you don't have a problem with it, you're our guy. So you yeah. make sure, you know, it, the difference, fine. You know, it, it, you, also what you would want to do is you make sure that this guy's not close to the president. Who knows? Maybe he was an outside guy. Maybe he was brand, you know, brand new to the, to the team. Not necessarily a rookie, but a Merc that you bring in from somewhere else. It's like, oh, yeah, new Secret Service guy. He's going to be driving. I and think, make sure I think the they... guy next to him is also on board because <laughs> otherwise that party ends really, really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, I think the concept of, like, obedience to authority and, <clears throat> and things like that are actually super fascinating, too, for – especially, with, you know, going back to studying, like, Milgram and things like that. Oh, just oh, let's that. do this. I did, I did a rant on this. <laughs> Just recently, I, I did a rant on, in fact, here, I'll send it, hang on, I'll send it to you. Well, go to my channel, or do you have access to my channel right now? Um, uh, your YouTube one? Yeah. Yeah, I can bring it up. Hold on just a second. There's a rant I did, and it's, in fact, not very long, though, at all, 
called. Uh, what is this in context to again? The the what? Are we talking about Milgram here, Mark? Yeah, Milgram. Right. Yeah, yeah, I did a rant on the Milgram experiment. I I, I should the get Milgram into it real quick. Okay. I okay. I well, think I I know what that is. The Milgram experiment? I don't oh, think I do. It's, it's old. It's an old experiment. I mean, like sixties. I mean, it, it, I mean, basically, in a nutshell, it's basically hinting on, like, like you're saying, Mark, is that like we wanted to see how far people would go in order for them from listening to people to, for just saying, like, you know, obedience to authority and being able to kind of almost submit to the powers that be and that kind of thing. So, Milgram designed an experiment. I think he was at a psychologist at a Yale, I think, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, here I will I will share you the direct video. Where can I post yeah. this in uh, chat? Yeah, pop it in the chat. Okay, here. So here, I did a video. In fact, it was one of my very very recent rants. It's called literally called "Why People Do What They Are Told," and you're absolutely right. It is fascinating, and we should teach this. That should be psychology 101. I actually, I mean, it should be like I the love first this topic. First thing you talk. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, let's segue into this, and then we can wrap it up. Sure. Which is. Um, Okay, why people do what they are told. The Milgram experiment, which they, why, why not? <laughs> Milgram experiment was very, very simple, which is you go into a room, you sign up for a psychology experiment, and you think that everything's objective, and it's not. You are in a room full of actors. Yeah, you would never you get away with this the, uh, nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd never be able to get away with this. No, not, a, not even close. Although they have done it for a number of years in other countries to, pr to, to see if it's actually still valid. It absolutely is still valid. It has yep. never, ever changed. And what they did was they told people, it's like, okay, you, you know, it's like you, you, let's, like you and me, Benjamin, and be like, okay, one of you two is going to be the question asker and the yep. other person is going to be answer the questions. But it's rigged, right? So you're going to be, so in this case, you are going, Benjamin's going to be the, the question um, asker. And now I'm going to go into the other room. So they take me into the other room and you see me getting hooked up to electrodes, right? And you shut the door so you don't see me and you can only hear me through an intercom system. Of course, all, everything is pre-taped. So here's how it works. Benjamin would ask me questions and every time I get it wrong, he get, pushes a button and gives me an electric shock right? Here's where it gets interesting. Every wrong answer, they keep turning up like 40 volts a crack yep. until, until it basically reaches lethal levels, right? And every time, and every time it pushes, yeah, you can hear me in the other room going, ah, no. ah, please stop. You know, I'm banging on the walls. It's all pre-recorded though. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm probably sitting behind glass watching, watching Benjamin. What was interesting was, so the guy that came up with the experiment, the, the whole concept <laughs> ironically enough, was to prove that the, um, it was, wasn't necessarily to let the Nazis off the hook, but there was an argument made to where, well, the Nazis, you know, some people said, well, Nazis did it because they're evil. And, other, and the doctor said, well, maybe they did it because it's part of human behavior. Right? Mm -hmm. And they thought that, well, maybe only two or 3% of people would shock, you know, would shock me into, into dying. Nope. Right? No. <laughs> 60% of people killed them. They killed them. And only because the, the guy that was running the test, the, the guy with the clipboard and the lab coat and sitting yeah. next to Benjamin was saying, please continue. You must continue. You, you have, and but what he was really doing was he was absolving Benjamin of the responsibility. So what they learned was- It wasn't people, me that did it. I was, told to, I was told to do it. Exactly, exactly. If people, yeah, well, I was only following orders. Yeah. <laughs> Turn up the gas. I was only following <laughs> orders. But, but and again, that was, I mean, but again, but what they showed was it wasn't just the Nazis. Everybody does it. And, and so now, does that mean that Benjamin is a killing machine? No, it does not. Now, in fact, most people, even going up to World War II, for example, 20% of the people, you've heard this in probably stats, 20% of the people would even pull the trigger on a rifle. Lots of people that were out there in infantry wouldn't even shoot because we have an aversion of killing people directly. However, indirectly, we are absolute monsters. Yep. We will absolutely pull that friggin' switch. Now, had you known ahead of time, maybe you wouldn't have. But then it got worse because then what they did was they, they added another person to the room, someone like Benjamin sitting next to Benjamin who was also an actor, right? And then it jumped all the way up to like 92%, 93%, basically almost guaranteed. You know, the, the, and so the scientists were just blown away by this, absolutely blown away. And so... So I made a, a video called 2020, Why People Do What They Are Told. And I, and I broke the, uh, the Milgram experiment down just to remind yeah. people 
of what that is. And yeah, people are really weird. It gets hardwired into us. I don't know what exactly is, but it's, it's this weird paradox because we don't like doing anything directly. If I told you, Hey, go knife Mike right now in the neck, right? You're not going to do it. Right. In fact, you'd have people, you know, I could hold a gun to you and, and you probably still wouldn't do it, but you take one degree of separation away from that. Yeah. You yeah. You just a little, a little bit of a buffer and, and you'll do it. And people say, no, you know, it's kind of like the, um, the denial thing. People are like, no, I wouldn't. It's like, yeah, yeah, you absolutely would. Now you wouldn't, now that I've told you about this whole thing, you'd go in there, but you'd only say no, just to spite me. Right. right. You know, but there's lots of people that would go, would go along with this. So yes. Well, that's, when, that's when, the thing is that like, you know, there's that old saying, like, you don't really know what someone's going to do until they're, they're put into a situation. And, and it's true. You right. know, when you, when you look at that, you wouldn't have believed that the amount of people that actually still continued to uh, shock people yeah. even after they were unresponsive. Yeah, even when they were dead. so high. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not responding anymore. And they said, please continue. And they shocked them just because well, the division of responsibility, like, like you said, as soon as you got that one degree of separation and you go, well, I, I'm not really doing this so I can sleep at night. Like that, that is scary. That's some scary stuff right it there. Is. It is. Now, now, just a quick question. So the people that were actually continuing on with the, with pressing the button, even well after there was no response, yeah. uh, was it a much, so you're saying it's a much higher amount than those who didn't, right? Is it like quite, is it a noticeable percentage higher? No, yeah. no, no. Meaning, meaning well, the scientists, it, when they initially designed the test, they only thought that two to 3% of the people would, would even go to even come close yeah. to lethal levels. Right. And it was 30 times higher. Huh. So every single person that, that walked in there had a 60% chance of killing the guy. Interesting. And, and they designed the experiment such that they actually show like at the very end mark that like there was like triple X's on, yeah. on the, on the, to, to design. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't right? like the, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a labeling issue. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Where, where it said, you know, danger, lethal, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, granted varied from country to country. Yeah. But that was the big thing to where, they were, you know, they knew full well what they were doing. Yep. But once they, they were left off the hook, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to get in trouble, the, which is why I used um, uh, in my Just a Mask video, there's a great line. I'm, I don't know if Christopher Nolan wrote it or it was one of the writers from uh, The Dark Knight where Heath, Leathers, Heath Ledger's Joker read off this little line and he goes, he goes, it goes into your point, Benjamin, about you just don't know about people until you put them in that situation. Yep. He goes, he goes. The system is only as good as is. Um, no, people are only as good as the system allows us to be. Right? He goes. He goes. You wait. He goes. When the chips are down, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. Oh, that was. Um, no, I think I think that was the Joker that said that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Joker that said. Yeah, that. yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and he was saying he was trying to tell he was trying to convince Batman. <laughs> we're getting into a comic book thing trying to convince batman that he was he, he why are you saving these people they're yep. animals they're complete mm -hmm. savages and he's not kidding i wrote a survival manual um years ago and i was saying look i go no offense i go but you've got to understand when pr the pressure is on people uh, will freaking flip yep. i go i go look at something i'll give you a great example of that was um uh was the the barry bonds home run baseballs which was Barry Bonds when he was going to break Hank Aaron's you know, record. People were at the stands. And these balls were going into the stands, right? This was yeah. a baseball game. And when that ball got even close, you watch the fans, they were just hammering on yeah. each other. I mean, if they had weapons, they would, they would, people would have gone to the hospital. 100%. And they go, that was just a freaking chance to get a baseball. And the reason why is because each one of those baseballs was worth thousands of dollars. And that was just for money. Like, you put people in a life and death situation? <sighs> All bets are freaking yeah. off, especially I, mothers, by the way. Yeah. Well, I think this has been incredible, but I think it would be awesome to to have you on again to, to talk more about that kind of stuff and just like, yeah. not even just like the psychology behind like obedience to authority, but like you said, like, you know, it's funny, you know, I, I, I wouldn't consider myself, you know, a conspiracy theorist buff, but I, I think that there is quite a bit to talk about for why certain things, you know, those experiments aren't done nowadays, you know, well, it's unethical. And, you know, a lot of people had a lot of trauma from it. Sh sure. Yeah. But that was a pretty, I mean, that kind of paved the way to like, like you said, for people to, to show how, how far they'll go when they're put in a situation just with someone, like you said, 
all they had on was a lab coat. Some of them had glasses and a clipboard. Yeah, that's and it. Did they? So I I just have two questions to follow up with the Milgram experiment. <laughs> yeah. Did, you were saying that the people that were pressing the buttons did they see the people before? No, they, that's the catch. At all? No. Okay. No, they could only hear them. Now, did they? Um, did they actually interview these people afterwards? Are there like interviews of these people talking? Yeah, after yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's lots of testimonials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. people, and again, that was the other thing. They, 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 they had no. There wasn't really remorse because they were they were following the instruct. What because the instructor took full responsibility for what was happening, right? Or they assumed it. And it's like no, not my problem. <laughs> it's like yeah. Well, what, no. did, what did the instructor say to them before? Just, just don't worry about it. Like it's, we well, got under just, control. He was kind of there's a lot, in fact, I, it's in the video I, I, I put in there. Um, okay. Something along the lines, I don't remember. I'm not going to butcher it too badly. Something along the lines like, you must continue. It is, yeah. oh. it is, it is essential that you continue. Yeah, the experiment oh. requires that you continue, that yeah. kind of thing. You might as well have done it in a German voice, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they didn't actually say at any point, hey, uh, stop whenever you want or carry on if you want to keep going. Well, no, no, no. That's, yeah. that's the whole thing. You don't want to give them the option. They were trying to test how far, you know, without, without co basically what they were proving was they could push them either way. Yeah, when right. you got, and, and it's like you, people shouldn't be that flexible, but they were, but only again, only if they had that degree of separation, you know, if, if it was sort of sanitized. And if it was a perceived expert. Right as well. Yeah, there you go. Proceed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, what lab coat goes on? I, I did a video called the code of credibility, yeah. which is people will believe just about anything the lab coats tell them. Yeah, you know. So, in fact, the, what we're going along here, not to end on a on a different note, but circle back, which is people are like the there's a thing I'm going to post um, an MSN argument between a financial guy and one of the the lead anchors, where it's like, look, I trust in science, right? You you have to believe. You have to believe whatever we say. Um, one of the most arrogant lines, and I know what he were, where he was going with this, but he worded it so terribly, was Neil deGrasse Tyson. When he said, science is true whether or not you believe in it. It's like, okay. Yeah. And then I come back and say, well, science is only right until it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, because science has been wrong tons of times, but that's not what it's about. You know, people, I, in fact, I, it was something I told the people of my group. So I go, if you're going to go on the street and interview people, wear a lab coat and carry a clipboard. Yeah. You'd be amazed. And seriously, and it worked. If you, if they had lab coats and clipboards and somebody with a camera, no one even hesitated. Totally. It's like, oh yeah, what are you guys doing? Right? Yeah. It's like the things that you see on the, the fake celebrities where you've just got a, a literally guy coming out, coming out of a bar and his friend is going, make way, make way, make way. And it's just like pretending. Like, and then people are like, oh, who's that guy? It's like, it's no one. And then everyone <laughs> starts wanting to take selfies. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Well, yeah. One, one more. Sorry, because there's, there's videos on this. You have to watch it, which is, yeah, there, there's, um, there's people that go around. It's really fascinating to watch, which, you know, they'll hire a limo with a whole bunch of the two things. One, they'll hire a limo with a whole bunch of people, photographers shooting them. And then you start asking the people, not the fake actors that are surrounding them, but the people in the back of the crowd that just got there. Oh, yeah. It's like people just make up movies. They saw the, this guy in. Right. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, I loved him in this. I loved him in this. It's like they, they have no idea who the, who the person is. Or if you have people on a street corner, the street corner is the best. You get like 10 or 15 people and you all start doing, pointing up, up in the sky somewhere. It's like, what yeah. the hell is that thing? You start asking 10 rows back, people 10 rows back see it whatever it is yeah it's just yeah mind-blowing yeah it's anyway. like it's almost like that group think mentality once you get a couple people involved it's it's amazing what a group can think it, it can kind of go with one person can have a perceived way of, of a thought process yeah and then it can influence the whole group and we've seen that we've seen that throughout history and we see it every day in society today it's it's unreal how um powerful that that is that really yep. is absolutely yeah. Well, well thanks, Mark, it's guys. been uh, it's been fantastic having you on. I think it would be awesome to have you on again to do <laughs> either another theory or like another um, yeah, just talking more about like that kind of stuff. It just kind of it just fascinates me and just like you like yeah. you know the uh, the the human extent. You know, it's just like a it is fascinating. Maybe we can get into uh, some kind of serial killer talk or something like that as Ooh, well. Ooh, so, that'd be fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. Thanks again, Mark, for uh, coming on. And I think this is now 
episode 39 or 40 i don't know but we, we yeah, took we're a little bit of time off That's now awesome. but um you, you know mark when we did when we did our episode with you we were at 13 i think episode 13 was with you and now we're at 40 episodes yeah it's pretty great I'm, I'm happy you guys are doing it yeah yeah man that was fantastic all but, right um yeah thank you once again to all of our uh, pizza crusts and chicken tendies and for listening in and dipping into one more cider ranch my name is ben and I'm Mike. And quick question before you sign off, Ben. Yes. Mark, if you had to pick between pizza crust and chicken tendies to dip <laughs> into the side of ranch, what would you pick? Oh, wow. That's so tough because I love both. Um, <laughs> let's, I say, would go... let's, say, let's say the driver of that car with JFK has got a gun to your head. <laughs> oh, um, chi- chicken, chicken tendies. Chicken tendies. <laughs> Perfect. Ranch. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Okay. Bye. Um, have a good one, man. Have a good one. See ya. See ya. Take care. Thanks again to all of you crusts and tendies for tuning in to another episode of the Side of Ranch podcast. If you want to reach us on our socials, you can on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. And you can leave us a voice message on Anchor. This helps us to chat directly with you guys and to continue to build a supportive community. Thanks again for dipping into a side of ranch. I'm Mike. And I'm Ben.